Look, everybody, sometimes you just gotta know when to quit. If something isn't working for you and you're just not enjoying it anymore, it's fine to walk away. That doesn't mean you'll never come back. No, I'm not talking about this YouTube channel, I'm talking about video games. Bloop, boop, boop. Bloop, doop, doop. Bloop, doop, doop, doop. <laughs> Hey everybody, I'm Michael. Uh, today I want to talk to you about two more games that I recently gave up on. If you've seen our previous videos, you know that I gave up on playing Shining Force a while ago. When you're playing through all these games you own in roughly chronological order, along with newly purchased games that fit into the timeline, I think it's fine to not complete every game. Sure, maybe my review scores for these games won't be completely accurate, but I have a lot of games to get through, and they'll just keep on getting longer from here on out. Today, I'm talking about Final Fantasy Adventure and Ogre Battle. Final Fantasy Adventure is a Game Boy game that was originally released in 1991. It's a Zelda-like adventure game with a few JRPG elements, like experience points and level progression. This game is the first in the Mana series. Uh, I recently purchased it on the Switch as part of the collection of Mana. This game has been remade a couple times, from what I understand, including Sword of Mana on the Game Boy Advance, with improved graphics, a few gameplay updates, and a more in-depth story. Final Fantasy Adventure actually has a lot to love in it. The story and characters are, for the most part, kind of expected, but overall good. The story in particular isn't that inventive, but it has a few nice twists in it. When it comes to characters, the hero is not a silent protagonist, so that helps. Julius and Mr. Lee are interesting villains. Where this game really shines, though, is its design. The character design is fun, especially the Final Fantasy characters, with, for example, some NPCs being Final Fantasy mages, and with Dark Lord being a Dark Knight. It's a shame that Fuji's design is so dull, though. But I love the monster design. They're all so cute. So why did I need to quit the game? The graphics and the gameplay. Graphics usually aren't a big concern for me when I play games. I play games for the story and the characters. But the graphics and gameplay make combat in Final Fantasy Adventure just too difficult for me. If there's enough on the screen, enemies will just disappear or warp around the screen, causing you a lot of damage. There's not any sound cue or knockback to show that you're being hurt. Some weapons even seem to draw the enemies closer to you as you're attacking them. I found myself dying way more often from packs of randoms than from any bosses. I'm sure I could just level up more, or I could get good as the kids say, but I just wasn't enjoying it enough to put up with the tedium or the frustration. So, I quit. Now, your mileage may vary. You may be better at these kind of games than I am, or you may enjoy the grind in games like this more than I do. I also have no nostalgia for this game, but if you do, then you might be able to put up with a lot more than I am. With all of that in mind, even though I didn't complete the game, I give it a 70%, or C-. I actually started playing Ogre Battle a few weeks before I started playing Final Fantasy Adventure. The game was originally made for the Super Nintendo, but I have the PlayStation port. I've owned it for a long time, but I've never beaten it. It's just way too hard for me. So this time I decided to cheat with Game Shark codes. Ogre Battle is a tactical RPG where you control an army. You can edit or create units out of a roster of recruited characters, and then you can send these units out to liberate towns and fight enemy units. You don't control the characters in battle, each character just fights according to a tactic that you've set for that entire unit. Each character has a set action they perform in the battle, and a set number of times they perform that action in the battle. The unit that deals the most damage to the other unit at the end of all of those set actions is the winner of the battle. The losing unit is then pushed back a bit from where the battle happened. Each character has the usual JRPG stats to consider, but they all each also have an alignment stat, basically how good or evil the character is. Your army as a whole also has a reputation meter that you have to manage. The game shark codes I used did just two things. One, gave my characters infinite actions in each battle so that I won every battle essentially. And two, set my reputation meter at max and it didn't change for the whole game. 
Okay, so great. With these cheats, I can breeze through the game and just see it for the content. For sure, I'm not getting the full effect of the game this way, but I'm able to get past the parts that I wasn't able to get past any time in the past. This let me see that Ogre Battle is really an excellent game. The story is more adult than many other games, which I like. It's a nice change of pace. The characters feel appropriately more adult, too. I love the moral gray areas present in the characters. The graphics are simple, but effective and beautiful. The attack animations mostly look like moving, lightly animated chess pieces, but it works for the aesthetic of the game. The character and monster designs are really cool. Some of the character portraits are a little scary, but not too bad. But the score of this game is stunning. Some of the sound effects are a little abrasive and mixed too high, but not so much that they completely cover up how genuinely beautiful the score is. So why did I quit? Cheating comes with a price, friends. My game repeatedly froze, and did so more and more often the farther I progressed in the game. I suppose that's what you get when you mess with a game's code. This game is just too difficult for me to play without cheating right now, though. Maybe someday in the future I'll have the time and a deep reserve of patience to struggle through the game without cheating. In the meantime, I can look forward to the other games that people from this team of developers made after Ogre Battle, like Final Fantasy Tactics, Vagrant Story, Ogre Battle 64, and Final Fantasy 12. As for Ogre Battle, I give the game an 87% or a B. Maybe someday, game. Maybe someday I can beat you. So if you haven't played either of these games and they sound interesting to you, I hope my score didn't scare you away. Your results may vary. Sorry it's been a while since we've put out a video. Uh, it's just life, you know? Ramin and I have been putting out a weekly playthrough review of Final Fantasy V on our Facebook page, so go check that out if you need a fix. There's a link in the description. The remainder of our media and 1989 videos are coming, I promise. Alright, thanks for watching. Don't forget, it's okay to quit things if you need to. Just don't quit our channel, okay? I love you. Maintain your groovy selves.